Welcome to The Hair Loss Show. Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. Welcome to episode 15 of The Hair Loss Show. I'm Dr. Russell Knudsen. And my name is Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash. Welcome to the show. Right, so uh, we've talked uh, a lot about strip, we've talked a lot about uh, FUE, and we've done with the, dealt with the pros and cons of both of those. Um, well, what we thought we'd do is take a little slight uh, different tack today, it, but still concentrate on FUE, uh, but look at the various options there are, because there's a lot of the in information on the internet, there's a lot of marketing information about a variety of different uh, products or machines, machines uh, that, uh, that can, can be used. Essentially, they're all doing the, exactly the same thing. They're all uh, offering FUE, which is what we're doing is um, dr uh, with a uh, motorized uh, punch, punching out each individual graft, which creates a small scar in its place. We're extracting that graft one by one and planting it. What most FUE surgeons uh, are using is a motorized hand piece and there's been a lot of change. It's like a dental drill. That's right. And there's been a lot of change in technology about the 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 um, the structure and of the of the punch, and that's changed a lot over the last uh, few years. Uh, and what we're doing with that is, like I said, just uh, punching out each graft one at a time. But uh, there are a lot of other machines out there. That so we can what's talk happened about. in recent years, Vikram, is that uh, companies have moved into the space and have started heavily marking their own machines. And uh, now there's no problem with uh, these machines being in the marketplace, but sometimes we have a bit of problem with the marketing of the machines. So as Dr. Vikram just emphasized to you, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about the Artes robot or a smart graft machine or an ear graft machine. These are the ones that are most heavily advertised in the world. Essentially, they're still trying to take a cylinder of skin out of FU, uh, using the FUE technique and leaving a hole in place. All right, so it's an FUE technique, and if you see an ad for an ear graft or an ad for a smart graft or an ad for an RTAS, they're all trying to do the same thing. So let's discuss it in a little bit more detail. What uh, Dr. Vikram also said is most people use hand-held uh, um, uh, drill bits and machines. And one of the things about the democratization, if you like, of uh, the process is that the equipment that you need to basically start is not very expensive as a doctor. And so, um, you know, you, for a few thousand dollars, you can have yourself with the right punches, the right hand, uh, the hand piece uh, with the, the, the motor, the rotary motor, and it's really not very expensive. But these companies have come in with these expensive products, and these are all very expensive products. So let's talk about it. The first one um, that was still a handheld machine was a near graft machine, which was um, based on a French um, a machine called the Omnitron that was around in the 1990s. Um, basically a good machine, but it's still a handheld punch. It has a vacuum tube on the back of the punch, which uh, you know, like sucks the, the graft out in some cases and puts it into a canister. Um, so that was a machine. And if you see the advertising for it, it will advertise strip with not a very good uh, strip scar on one side and a near graft procedure on the other side with no visible scarring. Just meaning FUE done with a near graft machine. That's what that really means. Smart Graft is another spin-off from Neograft. Um, uh, it's a newer um, product, slightly different with the, uh, the uh, suction technique and the canisters that the grafts go into, but essentially still a handheld device uh, that just uses a hand uh, drill and you're still taking the FUA out using that machinery. So I'm going to stop you there because whether or not you're using FUE by a motorized handpiece or you're using the near graft machine or the smart graft machine, it is very much user dependent. Correct. If it's handheld, it relies upon the skill, the technical skill of the surgeon with his hand piece. It's not about the machine, right? The machine does not create a big advantage uh, if the surgeon's hand skill is That's no right. good, right? So basically, it's still all about the skill of the doctor in creating viable grafts. But these are much more expensive versions of machinery uh, uh, of what people could use and get in exactly the same result, really, using a much cheaper hand drill. So we could, and this is the point we're trying, we could put a selection of graphs from a handheld device, whether it be a sharp punch, whether it be a dull punch or a hybrid punch, we could uh, give a selection of graphs from the near graft and the smart, and you probably wouldn't be able to tell. Even doctors wouldn't be able to tell, tell which 
sure machine created witchcraft. So that's the thing to remember there. So that kind of covers this. This really is interesting because it's a nice piece of machinery, but it's very expensive when it doesn't really give you much of an advantage over much cheaper pieces of machinery. Uh, when we get to the really expensive machinery, that's the RTAS, which is a robotic system. So this is designed to be completely different. This robotic system uses a twin video camera system to give a kind of a pseudo three-dimensional aspect to it. it, uh, it so it, the robot itself uses the two video cameras to focus on the selected follicular unit that you're going to harvest and it does it automatically. So this does not require the surgeon to actually create the cut. The, the robot creates the cut. The surgeon's role in the RTAS is to control the robot and the robot produces the cutting. So basically what happens is that I, as the surgeon, uh, because I have one of these machines, um, I get to decide where I want to take the harvest from and mark the area out for the machine. We stretch the skin and then I set the spacing between the cuts. So again, I look at the density of the area and decide how many grafts do I want to take out of this area so it doesn't become see-through. So I decide that and I put that uh, information into the machinery. I decide how deeply I want to cut because some people have thinner skin, some people have thicker skin. So there is a certain skill to the RTAS because you're not relying upon tactile feedback, which you, you do, get with handheld. Which you do get with handheld. And that's the thing because, one, I mean, I, we could talk, and this is going technical here, but you can talk about setting, using the machine that we have and setting various parameters. But at the end of the day, it varies from patient to patient. It varies from zone to zone, zone absolutely. on the back so, of the scalp. Uh, yeah, so there is very much, you know, there are certain parts of the scalp where you press a little bit hard, you know, use a little bit more force to, to get the graph, or you turn the speed up. Yeah, I mean, they're just slight changes. So that you do almost automatically when you're doing handheld, but you have to really dial down those parameters when you're doing it. When you're the doing with an RTS, you're relying upon visual clues. So you're watching what the graphs look like, whether they're sitting up, whether they're down too deep, whether the punch went deep, uh, deep enough to make the cut, whether the punch went too deep and the graph was pushed down. So there's a number of things uh, that happen there. So when people ask me, so robot gives a better result, the answer is no, it doesn't necessarily give you a better result at all. So again, be wary of the marketing. RTAS for me is a labor saving device, right? It's not something that says if I use an RTAS, I'm going to get a wonderful result. If uh, Dr. Vikram used a handheld on the same patient, he would get a lesser result. That's absolutely not true. I am in no way criticizing uh, other surgeons' ability to harvest with their handheld devices. The RTAS is a labor saving device. So that if I'm doing a large number of graphs, which takes a goodly period of time, most people don't harvest much more than 500 grafts per hour. Mm -hmm. So if you think about having to do a 2000 graft case and you're four hours with the drill in your hands um, making these cuts, um, it's quite a tiring process, a very physically demanding process. So the RTAS robotic device was designed to be reduce the physical workload on the surgeon. Now, really what happens is mostly it's just making the cut and you still have to use forceps to pluck the graft out just like you would with a handheld device. So yes, the, the RTS is a wonderful piece of technology. It's the new iterations of the software uh, are great. They are basically able to make recipient side incisions with the robot now, and they're now at the stage of developing a technique of, of being able to uh, insert the graphs into the slits using the robot itself. So even though it seems like this is the way of the future, it probably is still only going to be a niche area because it still has to be very, very closely controlled by a knowledgeable surgeon. I think that's the important part because you know we can, we've seen and we you know we read about patients that have had very poor outcomes with the RTS and same thing very poor outcomes with the handheld FU. So it is user dependent, but it's user in different aspects. Correct. With the RTS, you still have to maintain an eagle eye on what is going on with the, with the machine, with each quadrant and in each part of the, the scalp. And now we get into the contentious area about the use of these machines. Is that certainly in many places in the world at the moment, the evolution of these machines has meant there's an evolution to the doctor not being the one operating the machinery. Mm -hmm. Right, because if I can control the robot with a pendant or at the computer, so can anybody else. That's the reality because it doesn't rely upon my hand-eye coordination to cut the graphs. 
So what uh, worryingly is starting to happen around the world is that there are many clinics using these machines where the doctors are not in charge of the process. And I really, really am very, very wary of this. Uh, you know, we do not believe this is good for the field. We certainly do not believe this is good for the patient because it doesn't matter whether you, there's none of this devolving going on with strip, by the way, because nobody in their right mind is going to cut a piece of skin out and sew it up if they don't have a medical qualification. But a lot of people without any health uh, licensing or health training feel they can use this kind of technology because what are we doing? We're just drilling a little hole, drilling a little hole, drilling a little hole. We talked in previous episodes about the risks associated with over-harvesting, where you can create too much scarring in an area, you can create see-through, you can create infections. There's all sorts of things that could happen. We're not trying to talk you out of surgery. We're just saying these are surgical risks. And you need, in our opinion, to be in the hands of a qualified medical professional who understands both how to diagnose and how to manage a problem if it occurs, and, and to prevent it by not creating the problem in the first place. So these, this is not a way for doctors to step out of the process, in our opinion. This is a way for the doctor to remain in the process, using the technology to assist him or her, the surgeon, perform the procedure, not to hand it off to somebody else. So I, I mean, I'd just like to reiterate that, which is that a lot of people go online, they're doing research, and this is sometimes a selling point. Oh, we've got the near graft, we've got the smart graft. And yes, it's all very good to have that, but it's the person who's driving that. You know, it's the person who's driving the R test. That's important. It's the skill set to be able to recognize, well, what do I need to do? How do I need to do it in a, in a, in a skilled and yet artistic way to get the best possible outcome? So, you know, yes, these are, these are all great machines. And, you've, you know, like you said, you've got an R test up in Sydney, so, uh, and it's giving great results. I use a handheld uh, uh, punch and that's, uh, you know, I really enjoy that. So, and it's, but it's about the person who's doing the procedure. I think that is Not the about key. the technology, right? Because yeah. I hear about, you know, and, you know, especially not so much here in Australia, but more so in America, they have teams of technicians flying around the country that will operate on you. And, you know, you have to question, well, is that the We've right We've got a lot of point. misgivings about that. Yeah. But anyway, nonetheless, these technologies are FUE-based uh, technologies to assist the surgeon in the proper performance and accurate performance of FUE. So I hope this has clarified how we can get through some of the smoke and mirrors of the marketing and get down to the tin tacks of what actually this technology really means. It means you'd better be in the hands of someone who knows what they're doing. So I hope you've enjoyed today's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> On that somber note. <laughs> we'll say goodbye for today. Thanks very much. See you next time.